Hello everybody, welcome back to Cure for the Common Gain. Today, we're going to talk about Ulgarotha. Okay, not really. Aaron the Relentless, <clears throat> originally from Homelands, reprinted in, in the Time Spiral Time Shifted subset, is, well, first off, you can't tell me this doesn't look like Axl Rose in the 80s. I'm just telling you. Anyway, that's not this deck. I'm building another song title deck that's more about Axl Rose. Anyway, 5-2 haste, really over-costed regeneration, but, you know, I don't really know how I come across the theme of this deck. I can't tell you, but I'll tell you where it started at. It started with Threaten, because I like Threaten. It's not a particularly awesome card. You just borrow a creature for a turn. Now, yeah, it's threatened. I mean, you borrow their creature, you hit them with it, you give it back. But I thought, you know what? What if, what if that was my theme? What if I could just keep doing it over and over again? As it turns out, this ability is something that almost every single set, definitely every block, has. And you can, most of the time, it's steal a creature. There's a few times, like this one, to where you steal an artifact. Well, I say steal. Stealing is the wrong word. Borrow. You borrow an artifact. Because, you know, you give it all back. But it's a common theme that they do quite a bit. As... I'm not going through all these, obviously, because they're just slight variations on the same card. They're all pretty much threatened effects, like Twist Allegiance is not, you know. It's, it's a little costly at 7 mana. You know, the Underling Recruit, you can give them plus to the front. Word of Seizing has split second. Wrangle gets a little guy. I mean... They're all minor variations on the same deck. And I think of just the spell versions of these, I think I have 25, if I'm not mistaken. So, active aggression, and of course, lastly, active treason. Sometimes they're called active treason effects. Now, that being said, it's like, all right, this is what I'm doing. I'm borrowing creatures. So first off, some of these spells, you know, Active Treason is uh, not really expensive, but some of them are. So let's go through the mana ramp, if you will. Uh, of course, we got a Soul Ring into Cold Steel Heart is, you know, the dream turn one because I don't have a uh, red spells cost one less thing. Uh, Everflowing Chalice, Seer's Lantern, and Magnifying Glass, or Golem's Eye, rounds out the Artifact Mana. Now, Pyretic Ritual and Mana Geyser are in here for just the, the one-shot burst of speed. But, I come across Infernal Plunge. And that's what led me down a different path. What if I borrow their creature... I hit them with it, and then I sack it for personal gain, or f even better, for no gain at all. <laughs> so, um, before I get into the sacrifice outlets, I I've got four creatures that kind of do that too. You know, Conquering Manticore, Thralling Victor, Zealous Conscripts, and the Molten Primordial. So, Let's look at our sack outlets. Now, the first thing that comes to mind is just, you know, sacking it for mana. I just fling it at you. By the way, I flinged a to 121 power throw mock at somebody the other day. It, it, it was everything you hoped it would be. But, yeah, 
you know, you you borrow the creature, you hit them with it, and you fling it at them, or you fling it at somebody else. Whatever, you know. Or you can just sack it to the goblin bombardment. You can, you know, Shiv and Harvest is just straight up insult to injury there. Uh, you know, I'm going to sack your creature and destroy your land. It's also particularly useful because... There's one card that really shuts down our whole philosophy here, and that's Homeward Path. No offense, Adam, but Homeward Path is kind of the reason why I have the Blood Sun in here. Now, the Blood Sun is kind of a nombo with a few of the other cards, but, you know, we're talking one out of a hundred, and you ain't got to cast it. But... If they've got that homeward path, it is way worth it. Anyway, back to sack outlets. Of course, we have the bloodshot cyclops to just, you know, and then the original Chuck, the stone giant. I had to, you know, I was lucky enough to have an unlimited version here. You can always tell because it says TAP. The culling deus, sack a creature. Phyrexian vault. I'm going to sack your creature to draw a card. Pretty much the same thing with the Carnage Altar. Jinx Idol. This is this is always fun at parties, right? You know, you just, I'll take the two and then, hey, I'm going to steal you, dude. I'm going to sack it. I'm going to give you back an idol. Here. I love the four-letter flavor text theme that they had years ago. Um. There was at least one card in a whole bunch of sets in a row where they had four liter flavor text. Boom. Here. Heal. You know. But anyway. Probably one of my favorite sack outlets is why is that glare? It is upsetting me to no end. It's cold storage. Because The way cold storage works, it's not terribly obvious because this card was printed in Tempest while printing it. The creatures come back under your control. And when I run across cold storage, it made me think of the original version of it, Safe Haven. It rules the same way. Because you control the creature at the time it is exiled now you get the creature when it comes back into play. So, you can steal their creature, hit them with it, and then put, them at, put it in a safe haven. Like I said, not particularly awesome with the Blood Sun, but, you know, it's what we got. Uh, while we're here, let's do the other three non-basics. Ghost Quarter, to get rid of that Homeward Path. I had one red cycling land. I, I guess I'm out of the other two cycles of... Oh, I hate it when you talk about cycles of cycling. It just sounds weird. But high market for the same reason, just to sack a dude. Sack the dude that you stole. Glaring Spotlight is just about our only defense against Hexproof. So, eh. You takes what you gets. Trading Post... You can here. You can sack a creature. Uh, it's kind of like a Swiss Army knife here. You know, you can do four different things, but sacking a creature is one of them. To get an artifact back, I don't know. Maybe you'll need to get your spotlight back. You know, if you want them to burn out your spotlight, and then whatever. And last but not least for the artifacts is the soul net. Now I'll admit, you know. Just about every deck I build, I, I get out the beta binder, which there's <laughs> there's not a whole lot of cards in there, trust me. And I found Soul Net, and I'm like, well, I'm going to be sacking creatures left and right. And really, to be honest with you, there are other versions that are better than this. I don't, I mean, you know, it's not exactly amazing life gain here, but we're talking mono red, so our... Options for life gain are not exactly unlimited. Oh, hey, we got a walker. We got a planes walker that gains control of all. If you're looking, yes, uh, I know I don't use Tibalt a lot because he's 
just tear bad. But looking at it, him through the lens of this deck and gaining control of creatures, I mean, the plus one, drawing and then discarding a card at random. Yeah, random sucks, but let's face it. Are you really discarding anything good with this deck? I mean, just redundant copies of the same card, essentially. But anyway, uh, let's look at some quote-unquote removal. I've got Tremor because token decks are just such a big thing and one toughness. Eh, really, besides, we really don't care about stealing anything tiny anyway, which is the reason for the Tremor and the Volcanic Fallout, Slagstorm, Museum Mortars, you know, those kinds of things. Now, Collateral Damage does, you know, two things what we want. I can sack your dude that I, I borrowed and still do three damage to another one of your creatures. Like that Bob. Fiery Conclusion. Same card, just five damage. And then our last card is Red Elemental Blast, because y'all know why. I think I have actually, the more and more I've thought about it, I've talked myself out of Cyclonic Rift, period. As I go back, I don't remember what decks the Cyclonic Rift, oh, which, by the way, that leads me to something else, and it's really, really weird. By the way, I have been labeling, and I've got all of these decks actually finally labeled and named. Well, obviously, to decide some of these, but I know what these are. Obviously, that's the wife's deck. But they're all labeled and named. But the problem is, is I run across these 10 guys that apparently I can't find in on YouTube. I, I can't find where I ever recorded those decks. So, yeah, yeah, that's both Azuris right there. It's, it's super weird. Ulamog, Roshin, I, I'm, I was for certain that, because like the season is the deck where all the cards start with the letter S. Cedri is, of course, Caltrop's combo, or, you know, Azuri, Azuri, Zozu, because, you know, he's a ton of fun at parties. But anyway, I can't find these. So I may not have actually ever done these. I built them, obviously, and I remember playing most of them. But anyway, I don't know where these go. So if any of you guys out there who are, you know, a lot smarter than me have have seen these videos of mine, let me know what number they are because I can't number them. And speaking of which, I like found two numbers that I can't even account for. Like, I can't find... Apparently, I skipped number 46 and number 161. That may have been some of those. I don't know. Did YouTube just randomly delete a couple of videos? It's kind of hard for me to believe because they've got the very first one I ever did, which, I mean, geez, if you're going to delete something, that'd be those early videos were, well, they're painful to watch. But anyway, um, just I've been trying to get a little more organized, a little more so that I can actually find some of these when, because I've had buddies and my son and stuff that, hey, I want to play that deck. And it takes, it, yeah, and it takes time just to go in here because these are, you know, I mean, you can see these are in no particular order 73, 55, 22. I mean, so I, I need to get them in some kind of order. But. Yeah, the first job was getting them all numbered. And then uh, I'm going to have an issue because some of the numbers are, are these, and it's not going to fit neatly up here because these are stacked like from here to, to where Carthus is. That's 10 decks high. So I don't know. I had to build the new shelf here. Now, those decks up there on the top are all old ones that need to be reshot because stuff it has e either come out for them that is new or I don't know the video the original video was just bad I need to rebuild them whatever what have you but those 10 guys there man 
I don't know. Uh, I'm going to keep, I'm going through, <laughs> starting with video number one, going through and listing each individual one, hoping I can find the gap or I can find where these go. Uh, so far, so far I haven't, and I'm up to deck number 200, and I don't know. Anyway, I'm rambling again. I appreciate you guys watching. Y'all let me know what you think. Next video is uh, the last Guilds of Ravnica card. Lazav finally got one, got it built. That was probably the deck I was the most excited about anyway. I, I, the entire eight that was in Guilds of Ravnica, and it was the last legend I got. So, Thank you for watching. Y'all let me know what you think. And if you can help out on trying to find some of those, the Lost Ten, or the Lost Two, holla at me. Let me know. But until next time, it is time to shuffle and cut.